Nine times out of ten, you probably would have got off. Over, over uh, here. Is this the mail? It's, it's, it's the this mailbox is, is over there. Over where? Let me see. I mean, this ain't. All right. I'm pretty yeah, sure ain't nothing meaningful in here for me. Uh, probably would have got off there. Okay, so junk mail basically. This will be part two because the video cut off. So the the doctor kept looking at his mask. And the mask looked dirty, but it wasn't dirt, it was ashes from some seven by seven incense I was burning. Because once my brother starts coming around then my two sisters came to this man's house i said we're gonna have problems we're gonna have big problems and by that time i had already told leticia i was going to be able to pay her money back because my boyfriend was going to give me 50 percent of all the money that i helped him recoup from um just financial lingering situations that still existed had I called Mr. A, um, I called two people to um, help recoup monies that he had out in the world. And um, I was going to help him get back some money that maybe somebody took advantage of him. And I said, I, I, I figured out a way that you can get your money back and they won't have to go to jail for taking the money if they took the money from you. But me having that conversation with Letitia, Mrs. D was there at the flea market too. We all frequent the flea market, Funland, which is now gone up on East Hillsboro near 22nd Street in Tampa. And I knew once I talked to Letitia that I was gonna have a problem. I'm saying her name because Letitia is like an activist. She helps people solve their legal problems. So she wouldn't mind me saying her name. And she pretty much records every conversation she has with you. She doesn't tell you she's recording, but she's recording you. And then maybe Miss D was on the other side of the van as I was talking to her about a situation with the truck. And um, my intention wasn't to really get anybody in trouble. I was just trying to help him help me because he came in wanting to just do everything. I'm gonna get you a car. Let's get your children what they need. And I'm not that way. I'm like, whoa, stop. Let's lay this credit card on the altar and pray and do the big shit that need to be done. Like get my teaching certification. Let me take the test. Let me do the background check and get my teaching certification so I can go back to the classroom instead of being a substitute teacher being a certified teacher you know that's a big bump in pay so now we're talking about thirty forty thousand dollars versus you know twelve dollars an hour right so that's what I wanted to do and he was like well go get your children some underwear and socks and t-shirts and some clothes and I'm like to hell with that but we did it anyway went and got me a phone from did we go to the Walmart I used to work at I used to work in Wesley Chapel at the Walmart out there um, store manager Stephanie at the time hi Stephanie I heard you moved on to another Walmart um, thank you for being such an awesome store manager I know Letitia came to you whatever she told you it was a lie I've never stolen anything from Walmart. And I'm not saying she said I stole, but what I'm finding now is that they're going behind me to places and bad-mouthing me to people and lying against my character. Um, whoever the doppelganger is, is a prostitute, does drugs. I don't do those things. I'm here trying to take care of these four children, support my nephew, put them on a path so that they can get in a career and live a good life and be able to take care of themselves, save money, invest money, keep their yards up, drive nice cars, keep them washed and clean, all of their paperwork in order, insurance, 
title tag registration and plug into society and be legit and good crystal children okay that's my desire and I spend a lot of time praying and thinking about that I could be down at the courthouse yelling and screaming trying to see if where if my grandmother left me money and where is it if Lawrence left me money and where is it if Donald Ross left me money and where is it if Albert Clayton left me money and where is it if George Powell left me money and where is it if what my what the um, insurance company told me about my mother's insurance policy that we could only recover 50% and it was only a $20,000 policy and um, of that 5000 you could only get half of that you see what I'm saying so now that I see how my brother runs game he ran game on that and he stole money from me there too I believe so strongly no I know people reap what they sow I know karma is real and that's what I've learned by going through this entire dark night of the soul when Lawrence passed away and I received those text messages telling me to get out the house and leave his car and leave his keys and leave all his belongings in my soul I heard that's Ava those 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 texts are coming from Ava but at the time I didn't know that you could take over a person's phone and send them text messages and it looked like it came from this number when it really came from that number and at that time, probably Natalie Carnegie was helping her also. That's another activist. I'm sure she wouldn't mind me saying her name. So what brings me to this conclusion now is when I was working for People Ready at ABM down at Rogers Park Golf Course from July of, let me see, that was last year, July 2021 to December 20. 21 there were emails that I sent to my supervisor and then when I later talked to him and I said Craig did you get my email messages he said no did you get my text he said no and some of the text messages that came back to me were worded just like my sister even the letter where they let me go saying oh well you know it's winter time and we're cutting back on staff so thank you for you know the time that you spent here it sounded like Natalie Carnegie and Ava Atkins. Now we're talking about people that have been crafting paperwork for a while, or at least I'll say my sister. And I'm not saying these things to get anybody criminalized. I'm just telling the truth about what happened to me. People like this, they don't end up going to jail anyway. They get karma in different ways. They're pretty swift. The government doesn't really care. I mean, this is kind of like a government built on piracy. So the energy of the country is piracy, right? Can we agree that that's the truth? And I'm not trying to put America down. I'm just stating facts, okay? So when he asked me to help kill him, I'm, I'm like, tears are just rolling a little bit. And I'm like, wow. I meant I felt a feeling with that man that I, I haven't, I can't recall feeling with anyone else ever. And it wasn't just about him investing in me financially. When I shared my visions with him, he was like, oh, that sounds like a great idea. I don't know if he really meant it, but it felt like he really meant it. So I felt like because he grew up not in poverty he might have been born into a situation that could have been impoverished with his mother and father but after he moved with um, the Greek baker that his father worked with he was ex exposed to a higher standard of living and he became a more confident person and he acquired a skill set that allowed him to pull himself up out of poverty and I think because I kept praying and saying, Lord, you got to put me around millionaires so that I 
can teach my children how to have that aura. Now, I don't know that you can teach that, but being in the presence of millionaires, even if we're living in the pool house, we're going to still feel that energy of entitlement, that energy of, you know, arrogance, that energy of you, you need to get this done. So when I was with Lawrence and he was handling business, things that I thought were impossible when he was trying to get the car changed into my name, we had to go to Polk County to get most of the work done. And then after we did that, because Hillsborough County was closed, after we got the title transferred from State Farm into his name, from his name to my name, we had to go to 56 in Hillsborough to get it inspected. And they kept saying, oh, well, well, who did the work and where's that person? And he's like, I don't know where that man is. He didn't know what the process was. Buying his car back from the insurance company and then having it rebuilt. He didn't understand all of the paperwork and the logistics that went into it. So he didn't know where the guy was. So we had to do an affidavit that said this person helped me. We bought these parts. This is what we repaired. We went to State Farm, his his insurance company on, uh, what street is that? Temple Terrace, 56th Street, on the other side of Bush, right near Bush. And Melissa helped us notarize that. And then we had to take it back down to 56 in Hillsboro to get it inspected. And they kept giving us the runarounds. It was ridiculous. And he... He, 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 he negotiated with those people in such a way where he said, get this done for her. So I was fretting again and he was getting annoyed with me um, when we took the car to where he bought it from, Jim Brown. And he bought a lot of cars from Jim Brown. And he said, listen, I done bought a lot of cars from here. Get it handled. She needs to be able to use this car to carry people and you all need to check it out. So they checked it out. They did a recall, something in the ignition. They, um, we left it there. They put something in the ignition, replaced the recall. It didn't cost anything. And um, they drove us home. Then I think we called a cab to go back and pick the car up. So I kept thinking, wow, I didn't even know this was really possible. Now this man has been living down the street from me ever since I was born. I'm maybe, no, I don't think he was living there that long, but I was a child when he moved here. He was a lot older than me. And I didn't know that this powerhouse was right up the road. So I'm thinking how many other people are in these houses that have these skills? I wanna be among the world's greatest negotiators. So I read books about negotiation skills. I listen to the videos. And before that, I did 10 years of new age, heal yourself, Louise Hay, Anthony Brown, Anthony Robinson, I'm sorry. What's the name of Anthony Robinson's um, Awaken the Giant Within? So I used to listen to that over and over again. I didn't like the way his voice sounded. It annoyed me, but the information was so powerful. And he taught you how to create new habits and dissolve old patterns, right? And then Les Brown, you got to be hungry. He's been my motivational mentor for over 20 years. And I had the honor of hanging out with him for a day. And I guess I kind of screwed that up by um, sharing my opinion um, in response to his comment that black people are lazy. Black people might be lazy. I don't know. They've been brainwashed for 400 years, traumatized for over 400 years. And so I couldn't focus in on black people are lazy. I kept trying to get him to see that we want more. Black people want more. When you see a mother go spend money on fingernails and weave and, you know, buying all these expensive clothes and trying to dress up, that's a mother saying, I want more. And this is the only way I really know how to show you I want more. When you see a black man go spend all that money on rims and get a candy apple green paint job and, you know, soup up the car, he's saying, I want more in the language that he knows. So I was saying to him, 
I deal with people at zero and I try to build them up to the 10. And he said to me, he deals with people at a seven. So I understand that, that's his vision. That's his calling. Deal with people who have their shit pretty much together and take them on up them three steps to the 10. So me sharing that opinion with him lost me the opportunity to be a part of his group of speakers that he invited to his house and um, started like a little training institute. And I was crushed. I mean, I was devastated because I wanted to fall at his feet and just listen and learn. Um, I, I find him to be a phenomenal person to be left in an abandoned building, born to someone addicted to crack. I think that's right. And then to be adopted by an old lady who put a lot of care into him and his brother, Leslie and Wesley, Wesley. And to believe enough in the energy of good that all he had to do was awaken the desire within himself to create a change and not fall into society's standard of, oh, you got to go get a degree. See, that standard and then become a great person. It keeps playing in my head what he said in one of his speeches. He said, the easiest thing I ever did was make a million dollars. The hardest thing I ever did was to believe that I could do it, right? So that's where I am now. I am a billionaire. I attract billion dollar opportunities. I am a master manifester. I walk around with thousands of dollars in my pocket every day. Now this is ancestor money right now. <laughs> but what I'm trying to tell you is I recognize that I am currency. Thank you, um, God, Sister Tansy Hammond. She was a headache the last time I invited her to come stay here to help me with my children. But she said, you are the currency, Aileen. And I didn't understand that. I didn't understand that. And allegedly, she and Letitia got together and called the police to perform a welfare check on my children. So I'm a little bit on the hot side with her. Um, so I'm not trying to call her up and I'm not trying to call her over. I was saying thank you because that one statement she made, you are the currency. That didn't kick in for a couple of years, the understanding of that. So back to Les Brown saying the easiest thing was to make it. The hardest thing was to change his mindset to believe that he could. So I have been sitting here calling back all of the money that's owed me generations back, owed my ancestors back to the 1800s, banishing people, cutting cords, because people always want to hold on to gentle people and kind people who will give to them. They don't really want to do anything meaningful with their lives. They just want to use their energy, use their time, use them to solve their problems, and then, you know, toss them back to the woods. So now I'm saying I want to use my energy to grow my life. I want to use my energy to grow and cultivate my children so that my son can be the NBA player that he wants to be. So that his brother can be his agent. They don't all know this. So that my daughter can be a professional volleyball player. So that I can open up my resource centers. Shit, what's, what's, what's in all 50 states? Wawa keeps coming to mind. We have these gas stations here called Wawa, and I think it's the Red Dot Indian who have opened up these um, Wawas at the top now. And they came in with free ice. They came in with free Wi-Fi and they put tables outside of their stores, which was really nice. Yeah. Their problem, I guess, people who are homeless yeah. like, and yeah. of low like, income like, gravitated to the stores because we didn't have Wi-Fi. We weren't paying for Wi-Fi, right? And we needed the free ice, so these were all things that helped us 
And in certain neighborhoods, we overused it. Let me tell you what they did. They took up the tables and brought in police, off-duty police officers, to banish the people from away from there. I think they got negative karma for that. What I think they should have did was added on a little building on the side. You know, it could have been a screened building. It could have been a enclosed building with plastic and allow those people to be there. Yes, they're gonna cause a little bit of problems, but the same way you brought the police in to banish them away, you could have brought the police to help manage them and raise up their level of living with the free Wi-Fi, a little piece of shelter out of the very hot heat here in Florida and allow them the free ice. And out of those people, as you raise them up and they become better, you might have gotten some pretty good employees. You might have gotten some security guards out of that. And then you would have reaped the good karma and dharma from that but you dangle to carry it, you got everybody accustomed to it, and then you cut it off like good Americans do, right? Back to my original thought process. Wawa came through, you know, Tampa like boom. Five minutes, boom, another Wawa. Five minutes, boom, another Wawa. And people go there to get gas because I didn't mention this earlier, free air. They have free air pumps, and we pay $2 when we stop to get air at an automated air pump at a convenience store. If you stop at a tire shop, it's customary that you give a dollar or two to get air. They came in with free air, a free air pump for your tires, bicycles, whatever you want to blow up, free ice, free cups for the ice, right? and free Wi-Fi. And they've since kind of like curtailed some of those services. I told you about them taking up the tables and stuff so you can't sit there anymore. So the lack of tolerance for poor people and homeless people has to change. So I want to be a part of that. So I envision at the back of these um, places putting my little resource centers Spell Work Recovery Group will sponsor this because I believe a lot of people are having their energy manipulated and they don't know that somebody else is pulling from them their wealth, their health, their destiny, their power, their energy, and messing around in their Akashic records. So if those people take spiritual baths and cut cords dig up the roots, burn them and banish them and get their energy field and their aura back online, those people are going to be able to rejoin society as productive citizens. A lot of people are being used. A lot of people are having their energy pulled from them and somebody else's success is because they're using their energy, but they don't know it. Oh, my mom wouldn't do that to me. My dad wouldn't do that to me. My brother wouldn't do that to me. My grandmother wouldn't do that to me. My grandfather wouldn't do that to me. My wife wouldn't do that to me. And these people are doing it. If you know two people, one of those two people are using energy manipulation strategies against you and smiling in your face and lying to you. Well, you don't even know to ask it. So when my grandmother died, it seemed like whatever was holding me bound released me. So I truly believe that my grandmother was doing energy manipulation against me. And when I look at our family and I notice that all of her children, except for the child that was taking care of her at the time of her death, died before her, I thought she sacrificed them also. So I am taking this next year to study sacrificing. What does it mean? How does a person sacrifice another person? How can you take energy from that person and use it for your good? How can you sacrifice a person without their knowledge, right? So this is all happening in the invisible realm. 
invisible to your average person. So I'm sitting here and in the physical, I'm saying, how could they have married me off to somebody else? And I don't even know it. According to the tarot readers, they can read energy by using cards. And a lot of them are psychics and empaths. And a lot of them receive information from the spiritual realm. And then they tell you through the cards. So I'm trying to figure out what I've heard from them that hit me in my soul is somebody has married me off. And whoever that husband is that they married me to might have been the one to sign away my 25% ownership. That same husband might have signed for my um, inheritance from my grandmother any and all inheritance that would have been left me. I had some unclaimed funds up in Tallahassee and I had the forms in my book bag. My book bag was stolen. So somebody's already claimed three of those, right? And Lawrence had three unclaimed things. And originally I was gonna go and claim them. They sent me a claim form, which has since disappeared from my daughter's iPad under fail sands 911 at gmail.com. So somebody's tapping into the computers, whoever is doing the stealing. It's a group of people, I'm sure of it. And um, I just keep thinking it's Mr. John. Ava would be able to do some crap like this, and my brother might have friends that can do this now. He's got, um, you know, some powerful little troops a part of a fraternity, a part of a church, deacon at a church, right? Um, he's a contractor, so that's people with big money. And then I'm sure he knows people in the mafia that's come out in the um, readings as well, that somebody in your family is connected to a mafia and they might owe drug money and all of this. But my brother say he don't do no drugs. We know he drinks alcohol. We know he has DUIs in the past. They probably are sealed, but we know that. But he says he does not do any cocaine. He don't do no drugs. So all I can say is what he said. So back to the major point. How can they do all of these things to me and I'm sitting right here going to work for day labor $70 a day struggling to pay the lights the light bill was 200 for and when I say 200 I mean like 180 which I just round that up to 200 for almost six months and then I was at a friend's house Thomas you don't know his last name so you don't know who it is and he said, hold on, I'll be right back. He kept going to the room. Every time I go over there, he goes to the room. It's very suspicious. And I think he's in there talking to somebody on the phone. And he came back out and said, oh, well, you can get a $1,200 um, grant for your lights. And Spirit spoke to me and said, that's what Letitia did. I was applying for La Heap. And then I decided I wasn't going to go through La Heap to get my bill paid. I just struggled and got it paid. I paid the money. But strange things were happening. They took the $500 debt that my brother left in the light bill when he had to leave here because of domestic violence with my nephew. They took the money left over. I think it was like $400. They say I owed at 1316 Kill Place, Valrico, my mom's house out there. And they took $400 that somebody ran up when I was living in that little apartment or Ann across the street. Hi, Ann. I hope all is well with you. And I hope Miss Linda is still alive, your mother. Um, I wanted to talk to you about the house if you all haven't sold it yet. Um, so this is on 11th Avenue. I was renting an apartment with a doctor here in the area through his maintenance guy. And I wanna thank him for helping me. I made a mistake and let Don Ross move in. He didn't wanna stay in the room that he was renting across the street with Ann. And I let 
men push me around. So I let him come stay there. I let Tansy come stay there. And then when they came to deliver me eviction papers, they were laughing at me. They were supposed to be my friend, and they were laughing at me. They were sitting down laughing at me because I was panicking. I said, I need more time. See, I had children. Tansy ain't have no children with her. It was just her. She has 10 children, but she ain't have not one of them with her. It was just her. Don didn't have any children. It was just him. So this apartment was for me and my children, and they screwed that up for me, but I allowed it. So there you have it. But my fake friends laughed at me. And there's only one other person that came behind them and laughed at me. After Lawrence died and the dogs were in the house, and I was feeling uncomfortable sleeping in the house. I just, I couldn't rest there. Um, I went over to someone who was supposed to be my friend's house. And he was getting ready to go to work and I was leaving. And I said, could you go over there with me and, you know, let me get the dogs? And he said, <laughs> I got to get ready for work. And I said, wow, he's a fake friend too. I didn't say that to him, but in my soul, 